Yeah, first of all, a thanks to ChatGPT for suggesting this title. Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't have come up with that myself. <laughs> But yes, we, we are talking about the decentralization heaven today. Um, so uh, why, do you, why do people use, use HTTP? Well, there's a, there's a long, um, long list of reasons why people do that. Um, like HTTP has been around for um, 30 years, 30 something years, and um, it's basically universally supported. Like when people talk about the internet, a lot of people just talk about HTTP and they don't realize that there's a lot of other protocols that are also uh, part of the internet stack. Um, specifically, like uh, HTTP is supported by all browsers. Um, there's command line tools like curl um, that are like really popular and built, built in basically everywhere. Um, you can do HTTP from cloud edge workers and probably every program you programming language around has some kind of HTTP library. Um, in these 30 years of, of HTTP, um, a lot of companies have uh, spun up and built infrastructure to, to make that ecosystem better and to make it work more smoothly. Um, um, there's, there's CDNs, uh, content distribution networks, uh, that make it super easy that when you have a web server that's serving your website, you just you just sign up, you get an account, you put it in front of your your web server, and and within like five minutes, you have um, a globally distributed um, distributed um, edge network that's serving your website very close to the user, making your website very fast because the edge is so close uh, to so close to wherever the user might be located in the world. And it would be really nice if we could use this for, um, for, for IPFS and for Filecoin, right? Because our data is usually is content addressed, which means that once you have the hash of the data, the content behind it will never change. It's infinite, infinitely cacheable. So what, why, why has this been a problem for, um, for the libp2p and IPFS ecosystem so far? Well, the reason is that you don't do plain HTTP anymore. Nowadays, you do HTTPS. And to do HTTPS, you need a, um, a valid TLS certificate, meaning a TLS certificate signed by a certificate authority like, like, like Let's Encrypt. And you can only get a TLS certificate if you also have a domain name. Well, technically, it's possible to get, get IP certificates. Like, in practice, it's, um, it's quite hard. This means that you can only set up an HTTPS server if you have at least some level of control over the, the deployment, um, which means a domain name that you can get a TLS certificate for. And um, that's really easy when you're, when you're setting up like a big, a big service. Um, but when you just spin up a Kubo node on, um, on like a virtual server that you are that you just clicked five minutes ago. Um, the server doesn't have a domain name. The server doesn't have a TLS certificate. So you can't do HTTPS uh, on that server. So here I have a um, table of what um, a comparison between HTTP and, and libp2p. So we already went, or went over the, the amazing caching infrastructure that exists for, for HTTP. We don't have that for libp 2 p um, We don't have universal support for, for libp 2 p I mean, we have implementations in Go and Rust and, and JavaScript and NIM and Zeek now as well. Um, but there are still a lot of programming languages where we don't have uh, proper support for libp 2 p And if you want to run it in a, in a cloud edge worker environment or, or from your command line, there's no tool for that either. On the other hand, lib 2 p comes with some features that HTTP doesn't have, um, namely net traversal. Because in HTTP, the assumption is that you have this server on the internet that's publicly reachable, so you don't have to care about nets. Any, any client will just be able to connect through its firewall or through its NAT to your server, and it just works. But that's not the situation we have, uh, we have in a decentralized network like IPFS. We have people who are running nodes in their home networks, 
and they want to be able to be participants of the network. They want to be able to offer files to the network and have other nodes connect to them and uh, download these files. So we need to do a do net traversal to get through these, uh, through these nets to have a truly decentralized network. Um, so that's not, that's not possible with, with HTTP, but it's possible with libp2p. And as we talked about uh, in, in libp2p, we don't, we don't rely on TLS certificates or more precisely um, TLS certificates uh, issued by certif certificate authorities. So realizing this, um, this difference in features between HTTP and libp2p, this started a discussion within the, the libp2p team um, about half a year ago, like why can't we have both? Why can't we have, why, why can't we combine the benefits of, of HTTP with the benefits of libp2p and um, make use of all the, all the amazing caching infrastructure that's out there and also make use of the, of the, of the net traversal, um, net traversal that, that libp2p gives you. So the idea would be that you write an application um, that you would run on an HTTP server. So that, that, that you, you, you would write like some, some HTTP handlers when you get a GET request for this path and you, you do this HTTP response and when you do a POST request then you get a, a different response. And like all of this, um, all of this logic lives in, inside, and I'm using Go terminology here, your, your HTTP serve marks. And once you've constructed, once you've put all your logic into the surfmax, you pass this to an HTTP handler and you run this on your server. This is how you would set up in an HTTP server in, um, uh, in Go or basically any other programming language. So the idea now is what if you could take all of this logic that you already have, that you already programmed, that or you already tested and that works, and you just pass that to your libp 2 p stack. And your libp 2 uh, your libp 2 p stack would run your HTTP handlers on top of libp 2 p streams. So why is this interesting? This is interesting because of what, what the libp 2 p team has been working on um, over the last year. Over the last year, like the, the main theme of our work was um, getting, our, getting our connectivity story straight. We added support for web transport and for WebRTC, which now allows, um, allows users to connect um, to, connect to libp2p nodes from their browsers um, without requiring, uh, um, requiring a TLS certificate. They can, any, any browser can now connect to any public libp2p node um, using, using web transport and um, to private uh, libp2p nodes using WebRTC. So now if we, if we take that HTTP handler, put it on top of libp2p streams, now a browser will be able to connect to a, to, to a libp2p node that doesn't have a certificate using web transport. And then it does HTTP over that, over that libp2p connection. Uh, some of you might have played around with the um, Go libp 2 p HTTP packet. It's been around um, for a very long time, and um, the integration that we wrote is actually compatible with this um, with this packet. So we do have a specification for that. Um, it's not merged yet. There's a lot of discussion ongoing. Um, if you're interested, please head over to our specs repo and um, participate in that discussion. So now we have a demo for you. And as all of the demos uh, that are happening during this conference, Marco is doing this demo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about service workers before I actually introduce the demo. So just by show of hands here, who knows what service workers are? Okay, cool, that, that's, that's quite a lot. Um, so for most of you, this will be uh, kind of straightforward. So normally we think of service workers as something that can intercept HTTP requests from the browser and serve that request from an offline cache. This enables like these uh, offline apps to work uh, just fine. But hmm, 
We're intercepting a request, serving it from some offline cache. What if we could intercept that and, I don't know, something, something, there, there's something here, right? Like, okay, what if we intercept the request and now we ask some random peer in our network to fulfill that request? Uh, we, we can do this, so, so that's, that's the demo. So, let's see, let's see if it works. Uh, nope, that's the wrong website. Okay, here we are. I lost my mouse. Okay, here we are. Okay, so this is, so this is a uh, website I made that loads a service worker and that service worker intercepts HTTP request calls and then looks at the URL that you gave it. So in this case, the URL has a hash at the end and that hash is just a multi-adder for a peer. And to make this a bit more interesting, this peer is actually Martin's laptop. Uh, <laughs> and, and you see a little lock icon there. This is like all HTTPS. We're not doing like any uh, trust, I, I ignore the certificate. This is all like totally fine by the browser. Um, and so I'm gonna make this HTTPS request. You'll see here in the URL that we have like this slash IPFS and this CID. Uh, and I'm using this notes because it's a little bigger. So we're gonna refresh the page here. And here on the left, you see, okay, it's IPFS docs. Yeah, so what? Um, here on the right, you see normal uh, HTTP requests from the Chrome network inspector. And you're like, okay, yeah, so what? Okay, but look at this. The size here, this is a service worker. These requests were intercepted by the service worker uh, to like this JS asset. Instead of going to this IPFS gateway.io uh, page or server, it's being intercepted, passed through a web transport connection to Martin's laptop where he gives me his local IPFS docs uh, and then serves it to me. And then my service worker unpacks that response and gives it to the browser. So the browser has no idea that we're doing libp2p here. It just like makes a request to like, I don't know, give me the IPFS docs. And uh, libp2p under the hood is like, oh, I know Martin has that. Let me get it from him and gives it to the browser. Browser's like, cool. Looks like a normal HTTP request to me. <laughs> And uh, all, all the normal Chrome debugging tools, dev tools, they all work. It looks like HTTP, because it is. <laughs> all right, uh, any, any questions? Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, that works. I, there was, I had a whole backup thing to do, but. <laughs> Just kidding, it was the only thing. I had no, uh, no, no worries there. <laughs> Oh, this is great. Uh, one of the big benefits of uh, pulling HTTP into libp2p is to be able to use the server-side infrastructure. Like you mentioned, Martin, you mentioned it in terms of caching and load balancers and so on. Um, uh, is there kind of work towards that, or kind of where are we on that landscape? Like, can you right now um, put libp2p connectivity and services behind that infrastructure, uh, or is, is that still um, th this is less HTTP inside of a libp2p stream? but it means turn a libp2p stream into just using vanilla HTTP as its uh, transport. Yeah, we, 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 don't, we don't have any, any like proxy that would open, open libp2p and then put it uh, onto HTTP. The, the idea is that you would just reuse the HTTP handler that you have to run it on, on a server and you can then, um, with that thing that's running on top of HTTP, you can use all that caching infrastructure. And then you use the same handler for for peers that are behind NATs uh, to get the benefits of libp2p. But, but that doesn't work for middle boxes, right? It doesn't, so like um, if you look at a, uh, at a large deployment on HTTP, you usually have your server is running on some, you know, 10 different web server machines are running behind some big load balancer, and then that's running behind some like caching infrastructure. And all of those work because you can use HTTP and all of those can introspect the request and can like do all of the smart HTTP things. Yeah. Um, HTTP inside of another transport doesn't, can't do that. Um, so I'm talking about the reverse of, of like, 
being able to run your Lippy2P applications over HTTP so that you can leverage that. Yeah, so if, if it, I, I would, I would um, make the counter argument that if, you, if you're running a, a service that has like 10, 10 servers already and you're doing load balancing, then getting the TLS certificate and the domain name is probably the least of your problems. So just, just use HTTP in that case. No, no but like you have Lippy2P networks like IPFS and Ethereum 2 and Falcon and so on that want to use these infrastructures mm -hmm. and they currently can't. So I, I, I kind of like see this as like the HTTP servers are kind of their own peers as well. So like um, the client would see like, oh, you know, I see these multi-adders have the content, but I also see that this like HTTP server has the content as well. Like I can ask that HTTP server and okay, yes, this HTTP server now has no idea about like, it, it doesn't have libp it just speaks HTTP, but that, that's fine because the client knows that like it, it's still making the same HTTP request either to like a libp node or a HTTP server. And so we reuse all of that by not changing it, if, if that makes sense. But is it actually reusing it? Because you couldn't um, speak to those caches and to those load balancers with your application, right? So like, be, because you're sort of wrapping the application in a lip 2 p stream, uh, you're nuking out all of the HTTP logic. Like you're bypassing all of that. You can't use any of the caches. Because the lip 2 p connection will terminate from the source client all mm -hmm. the way to your, to your web server at the very end. Um, and it won't be able to like interface with anything in between. Right, so I guess if your application uses HTTP, right? Then like under that HTTP hood, there's like, okay, can it use a normal HTTP server? Yes, it gets all the caching benefits, right? Can it not, like, is that server behind a NAT or does it not have a TLS cert? Okay, then it has to go through lib P2P. And then in that case, yes, it does not gain any of the caching benefits because like that stuff doesn't exist yet. Yeah, um, great, uh, thanks. Yeah.